everyone, I'm Amanda Weigel. I'm with the Global Hydrology Resource Center in DAC. I am part of the science team there. And I'll be presenting today on a new way to explore field campaign data. So one of the science areas GHRC focuses in is extreme weather. We can ask the question, well, why do we care about extreme weather? Well, extreme weather has an impact on local economies, infrastructure, energy, human health, and even ecosystems. And it impacts people around the world each day. So how can we better prepare for these extreme weather events? Well, there's a lot of techniques being implemented, such as weather forecasting, using remote sensing observations to monitor these events, disaster preparedness, and then also scientific research to understand these processes. However, each of these preparedness measures has one thing in common, and that's data. Data is used to assimilate into these weather forecasting models, it's used for observations. And then in general, atmospheric field campaign uh, experiments are deployed to study these extreme weather events or certain phenomenon of them in more detail to understand the processes and the characteristics involved. Now within these, these field campaign events use multiple instruments and these instruments are used to create data sets of various formats that come in different sizes and shapes. So it presents a challenge in using these data sets. So Global Hydrology Resource Center has developed a field campaign to help address these needs. We tested it and developed it around the Hurricane and Severe Storm Sentinel HS3 Airborne Field Campaign. And it was created to reduce the effort involved in discovering these types of heterogeneous field campaign data sets and also cater towards event-based research. So in general, this Field Campaign Explorer allows users to move more seamlessly between the data discovery, visualization, and acquisition process. It was originally tailored to appear to a series of data users, and those included our HS3 science team members, NASA Hurricane Science Research Program, operational users, and then the more general scientific community. Now, the current data we have is the scientific data collected by these instruments, more generally formatted in NetCBF CF format. Uh, we also have browse imagery created by the PIs of these experiments, as well as flight reports and our flight tracks. Here's a video of our introductory blog page. Again, this tool allows users to it also you can explore historical hurricane track information. You can interact with the view the data collected during the campaign. Uh, you can use it to download subsets of data sets, so download around a specific area of interest. But also, we have this capability to leverage mission reports, which have generally required manual effort to extract information. So what GHRC has done is they've extracted this information for you and applied spatial and temporal tags to incorporate it into our field campaign explorer system. So as you scroll through there, it's going to take you to our hurricane um, exploration browser. So then here, this is pulling historical hurricane track information where you can plot and compare different characteristics and features of past hurricanes. You can derive general statistics and take a take a deeper look at hurricanes that were studied during the HS3 campaign in the time period of interest. You can then select a storm of interest and look at it in more detail. On the right here, we have information actually extracted to those previously mentioned flight reports. In our interactive map viewer, we have uh, flight tracks, hurricane tracks, our data collected during the campaign all overlaid on satellite imagery. And then one of the nice capabilities of this tool is you can fly along with the Global Hawk community. In doing so, this allows you to identify features of instruments in both two and three dimensions. So you can identify these atmospheric features in order to subset portions of them. So through this, this allows you to identify this region plot the coordinates, and then on the fly, plot these subsets, and then preview the actual data. And then using your NASA Earth Data account, you can actually go in and download both the whole data sets and the subsets of the information. So in conclusion, uh, the Field Campaign Explorer tool will become fully operational to the public in spring of 2017, so that's coming up around the corner. Um, we will be working to incorporate our other field campaign data holdings, as you can see, we have a vast majority. Um, more, most recently, we have our GPM ground validation experiments. We hope to incorporate those as well. And then finally, we want to work more to make this platform more usable 
Institute for Data Users. So if you're interested in exploring this tool on the webpage, feel free to follow the link here um, and ask any questions or talk to us after. Thank you. Yes, yes.